live from New York City, the dance capital of the world, the adventures of my ballerina and me show. My ballerina and me We two are as close as can be Whether I'm trying to climb up a tree Or sitting down with you for tea We're dancing We're dancing Sometimes we go for a long stroll ride Or in the playground I can go down the slide It doesn't really matter the things that we do all that matters is just me and you We're dancing We're dancing My ballerina and me We two are as close as can be Stopping over to come and see my ballerina, my ballerina, my ballerina and me. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Flores. I'm the artistic director of the New American Youth Ballet in New York City. New American Youth Ballet is an award winning program. We were rated number one dance conservatory in the USA by Dance Teacher Magazine. My training and background include studying on full scholarship with the Bolshoi Ballet Academy, as well as studying opera and musical theater at the Juilliard School of Music. As a teacher, I was the artistic director of the Harkness Youth Ballet at the 92nd Street Y, the head of summer dance at Ballet Academy East, as well as conducting a program for the Dalton School of ballet and ballet history. The New American Youth Ballet School has had many performances with a live symphony orchestra. This sets us apart from all the rest, where we instill the joy and the love of the traditions of ballet at a young age and a full symphony orchestra. So what is the My Ballerina and Me curriculum? Our program is special because in addition to teaching caring and correct classical ballet technique, the parents are not left to the side. They too learn correct form and what to look for in their young dancers. So when they go home and practice together, the dancers can make the most progress and utilize the time to the fullest. And let me tell you, the music that we use for our classrooms will stay with you, teach you ballet vocabulary alongside with your child, and simply entertain you. This music was developed together with myself and Dr. Alan Turry of NYU, amazing musical therapist who understands how to write and compose music that will engage emotionally and from the inside really bring out the joy in dancing and learning with your child. So with this, we invite you to sample our program and we can't wait to get started. about our program and all the possibilities it has. Feel free to ask me questions and I can't wait to come in and meet with you and begin teaching. Thanks for watching. Hi, welcome back to the adventures of My Ballerina and Me. I'm your host, Elizabeth Flores. I'm here today with Brandon and John and uh, two very fine male dancers and we're just gonna discuss uh, boys and men in the ballet field and how you get into it and uh, if there's any obstacles or things that that you want to just discuss further for our audience out there who might like to get into the ballet field and maybe I don't know is there ever some difficulty like at school you feel with your friends if a, if a boy wants to take ballet is there how, how do your friends feel about it does it matter to you well, how, how was your experience getting into ballet uh, Personally, it was uh, it was quite it was quite the ride. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, it was um, it was tough at first. Definitely. Now you you came into dancing, you've studied 
Brandon does all different styles of dance, and you came to <laughs> me as a very, and I didn't know, you, ca you told me about all your, your hidden talents a little bit later into it, but hip hop, pop and love, how did you start dancing? Start with your first dance experience. Um, actually, my very first dance experience, those and impersonating Michael Jackson. Cool. Yeah, I just saw videos of him dancing, and I was like, whoa, I want to do that. Right. And I just started impersonating him, um, and then my mom saw like potential in me. Right. And she was like, hey, I'm gonna put him in a in a hip hop class. Smart so, lady. Yeah, yeah, I'm very grateful for that. Um, so I started hip hop, fell in love with dance immediately, like, yeah. on the spot. Uh, and I was like, I want to do more. I want right? to do more. I want to keep dancing. So I moved into break dancing, pop and lock. That was kind of my thing for a couple of years. Now, why ballet? Why do you feel ballet is important? Ballet is important for every single dance genre because yeah. it, if you look at any genre, you can see little hints of ballet everywhere. You can yeah. see whether it's first position, plie, a pirouette, whatever it is, you can see hints of a ballet foundation inside. And it makes you a cleaner technician, so you exactly. can, it's, it's probably, I think, one of the harder forms of dance. Not For that sure. I can do pop and lock anywhere near the way you can. <laughs> <laughs> In the closet, very, very dark and hidden, I try. <laughs> but it doesn't come out very good. But I think, I think the foundation of ballet uh, really gives you a clean technique. Definitely, it makes it's you a springboard. makes you a very strong dancer. Now, remember you telling me in school you're one of the most popular kids because of your probably because of some of your dance, your pop and yeah. lock, and your you know hip hop. So when you you got together in ballet, I remember your first ballet class. I could tell you had talent right yeah. off the bat. Now, when you started taking ballet, was there any change with your friends or anything at school? Definitely, really a huge change. But they knew honestly. you were a dancer. Yeah, but the kind of style made a difference. The style makes all the difference. Really? Being a hip hop dancer, everybody thinks you're so cool because right? hip hop's fashionable, it's stylish, right. it's popular. Um, all the latest music videos have hip hop sure. in them. But then the minute that you hear, oh, a guy's doing ballet, they're like, whoa, whoa, that's not, that's not okay. Oh, really, huh? Yeah. Well, it didn't stop you. And where are you? You got a scholarship. Where? What are yeah. you? What are you headed to do in the I'm fall? Uh, I'm going to uh, Mercyhurst University up in Erie, Pennsylvania. I'll be majoring in dance and minoring in theater. On scholarship. On scholarship. Well, yeah. it showed your friends, huh? Definitely. Now, how about you, Mr. Talented over here? <laughs> so, when you started, did you always wanna? Did you always wanna dance? Did you do dance at home? How did you come into dancing? Uh, Mama just. So, someone said boys couldn't do ballet, but hmm. they, but when my, when I was with my babysitter in the train, I saw a picture of boys doing ballet. You did? Mm-hmm. And you said your mom has a friend who's a professional dancer. You saw him do double tours mm -hmm. and everything? Ooh, I love double tours. Yeah, yeah. Those are fun. So did you, did you feel like, I don't know, were you a little nervous to get into the ballet class because of school or anything? Oh. Actually, Mama just put me in ballet class. She's another smart lady. Yeah. She's a very smart lady. Yeah. You can't always listen to people that have things to say. And then definitely, I showed my ballet shoes to my friends at Show school. your ballet feet to the camera. Just point your foot and hold it up there. Those of you that don't know ballet, that's a ballet foot right there. Okay? You take that to anyone in the world, and they'll tell you that's a, that's a ballet foot. Definitely. So... I heard that you put on your own show. Yes. So you got all these friends who are telling you ballet isn't cool, and then you just gathered them all together, and you directed Actually, a show? Actually, some of them already did ballet before me. So you used their talents in your show? Mm. No, I didn't know they did it until I showed my ballet shoes, and they, they said they were in the Nutcracker, and then my movement teacher said they, they were in the Nutcracker. And then we started this whole Nutcracker. We made costumes. I we saw made the this whole show. So you directed wow. the whole thing. So it was kind of our own Nutcracker because it it wouldn't because it was getting close to the end of the school year. Yeah. So we had to do a short one, not like the whole Nutcracker. You had a big audience. And we only have twenty one kids, but I tried. That's I, a pretty big. Pro How old are you? Uh, six and a half. Give me five. So you're six and a half and you have a production with 21 kids. 
But not That's all the tough. kids did it. But I convinced some of the kids. Some of the kids didn't want to do it, but I convinced them. Did you have any boys in your production other than you? Yes, a lot. Really? Mm -hmm. So you taught those I'm not people. <laughs> you taught, you taught those people a lesson. I sold. So For sure. Good. All right. So let me ask you both. What advice? Since you're both very talented people, what advice would you have for maybe some boys watching this show that think they'd like to dance, but maybe they think, you know, all I see is girls dancing out there, which is not the case, but maybe they just see it more sometimes. Do um, you have any advice for for people uh, who'd like to try dance, ballet in particular? If it seems like that's the hardest thing to maybe uh, get over that hurdle, what advice do you have? Honestly, just if you if you have a passion for something, yeah. don't let anything stop you because no one controls your life except you. Yeah, and yeah. no one no one will tell you, oh, you can't do this because. It's meant for this person. No, dance is meant for everybody, and dance does not know any kind of gender. Doesn't know any race. It doesn't know. Doesn't right. know anything like that. So right. you can be a guy and do ballet. Absolutely. And be perfectly fine. Absolutely. People, people will talk, but it's your choice whether to listen. Chances are, these people. You give yourself a couple of years, you won't even know these people anymore. Exactly. So if you let them control your decisions that, if you're super talented at something, you're better off sticking with it because, you know, For you don't sure. know, you know where Because then you might be, be famous. You know, I wouldn't exactly. be surprised. Okay, exactly. I, I know you I'm among greatness over here. And what advice would you give? Well, it seems like you gave your advice, but you, you put a bunch of people in the production. Were these any of the same people that gave you problems? Uh, one of them, yes. Really? Wow. So then you wind up directing him in a production. No, it wasn't a him, it was a she. Oh, right. Well, we don't have to name names, but you showed her. Ooh. You had her in the show. And how yes. many boys did you have in your show? Uh, a lot. Really? But not the whole class. Well, I bet you had an audience of boys, too, didn't you? Yes. See, that's that. it's showing by example. Definitely. Well, let me shake your hand. You keep at it. Pleasure having you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Tune in next time and, you know, email me some questions that you might have for these guys and uh, anything we can do to keep the discussion going, we will. We'll see you next time. And now, a mini ballet biography by our student, Addie. I started dancing when I was about three or two. That's pretty much as long as I can remember. Whenever I see a big space, I just like to dance. I like stretching my body. I like, like seeing who I am. It feels like I can't spend a day without dancing. Like I dance everywhere. When I was a baby, like really, really small, and then I was adopted by my mom, and she's really nice. Back in 2011, I visited China, and I got to see the orphanage that I actually was um, raised in. And um, the orphanage gave me this um, comb and um, mirror. And there's a peacock there, and it's very special to me because I did a peacock dance. The people who taught me it and helped me are very, very caring and have a lot of empathy, like Miss Elizabeth and my mom and Miss Bonnie 
and my sister, and I love them very much. It makes me think about the peacock dance and how pretty and wise I am, because that's what the peacock is about. It has some diamonds there, and I think some gold. I thought that I felt like I was very special, and I didn't know I was that special. But everyone is special. I mean, everyone has a special thing. You can follow your dreams. I mean, if you want to become a singer, I guess you could work very hard and maybe become a singer. Or if you don't make it, you can just think of another thing or maybe try again. I mean. Just keep going. Have stamina. Keep going. Everyone has a talent. Everyone in my class. Everyone that I know. If you want to become a ballerina, it's not that easy to become a ballerina. You have to work very hard. Like if you want to become a rock star or you want to sing, you have to work very hard. I mean, it can't just go like. That. Hi, welcome back to the adventures of my ballerina me. Today we're at Youth America Grand Prix with Joanna from Company Ballet School. Company Ballet School in Spokane, Washington. And her beautiful student Clara. <laughs> so we just saw Clara perform. How has this experience been for both of you? It's been really great. Just meaning meeting a lot of people just from all over the world. It's just been a great experience and taking all these master classes. Yes. And doing rehearsals for the Grand Defile, it's just an amazing experience. And how has it been um, preparing? What was the, the time frame like? When did you begin training Clara for the, the competition? We really start about a year ahead of time Yeah. Um, in, in choosing our um, variations and starting to prepare. And then um, then we go to our semi-final event in Seattle. Okay. And then if this dancer qualifies there, um, Clara won first place. Congratulations to you both. Thank you. That's um, wonderful. So that was that was a big surprise for us. And that's a big deal. This is a very big competition with a lot of dancers, right? It's, it's grown yeah. so much. 10,000 dancers audition around wow. the world. concentration and focus and a lot of training outside of the studio and inside the studio so it wasn't not a lot of pressure or anything like it was just a regular routine with just some added privates and just working a lot more too so. <laughs> um, how long each day do you train um, most of the days it's three or three to four hours and some days it's five hours and 1,200 are here, and about half of those are ensemble members. So there's about 200 dancers in the senior division, girls and boys here. Yes. Um, out of, you know, 10,000. My goodness. Around the world. What advice would you give a young dancer entering this competition? Just breathe. Just know that, understand that you're in the same boat as a lot of other people. You're going through the same thing. You feel the same stresses and pressure. So you're all just here for one thing. So just whenever you feel down or like lack of confidence, just keep on thinking, other, I'm not the only one feeling like this. 
and just work as hard as you can because once you're on the stage, no matter what the outcome is, you know that you've worked hard to achieve this. Just to say that you've performed in the competition is amazing and it makes you feel a lot better. <laughs> you must admit we have some pretty amazing guests and we love to hear their stories. Now you must be wondering what's coming up next on the adventures of My Ballerina and Me. Well, just to name a few of our upcoming guests, we'll interview Master CJ from Karate USA and find out all about martial arts and the discipline and training that goes into it. Join us after a performance of Swan Lake with American Ballet Theatre where we interview maestro David LaMarche, the conductor of the American Ballet Theatre Orchestra, where he tells us how he got started and what goes into conducting the ballet orchestra. We'll hear from Frank Perry, amazing music producer of Roper Records. For all us ballet teachers out there, we love his music and all the CDs he's produced over the years. And we'll get to hear his story and even how he danced with Ginger Rogers. We'll visit Dr. Jay Hint from the New York Chiropractic Life Center, a fantastic place for all your needs, chiropractic and to keep your spine aligned. We have a fascinating visit with Alexandra Birdie, a professional dancer, actress, and journalist. Also have an amazing time with Michelle and the Party Pups, dancing Cocker Spaniels, and they even ride skateboards. But you can't see it unless you tune in next week on Sunday at 4 p.m. at mnn.org channel 2. Thanks for watching. special sponsors who help make our show possible.
I'm glad you like the show. You can see the adventures of my ballerina and me on every Sunday at 4 p.m. on MNN.org channel 2. See you next time. Bye. 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 YouTube channel, the adventures of my ballerina and me. Some great news for all you fans out there. The Adventures of My Ballerina and Me has been nominated for a Public Media Award of Excellence. More information soon to come. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.